All right, what up, y'all? It's Matt Shop. So I've been working on this abandoned Yanmar tractor rebuild, and I have gone through all the electronics. It has been painstaking. I have had the solder stuff, cut stuff, splice stuff, heat shrink stuff. You have no clue. But um, I know a lot of you guys have these tractors, and you want to fix them up. So I'm going to show you exactly how the dash and everything is supposed to be wired so that you can copy it, because it's not anywhere on the internet. So basically, we have a thermal start here, turn to the left and it'll drip a little diesel in there and get it going, but I don't have that. So accessory position, you can see the lights come on. Then we got start, you know, crank the starter. But in the accessory position here, we can check it out. Uh, there was supposed to be a horn here. Somebody took off the horn, so I just left it blank. Probably put like some work lights, a little switch in there. Then we got the temp gauge, fuel gauge, turn signals. Now this is a battery level, fluid level indicator light. This doesn't exist in this country. Japanese batteries had these little sensors built into the batteries. So that's just disabled permanently. Then we have a radiator reservoir, um, you know, level right here. That gauge, that's disabled because my new tank doesn't have that. Then we have the oil pressure here that should shut off when it's running. And then right here is charging and that should shut off while it's running. And then, you know, we can check them all here to make sure they're working with the little check button. So this right here, these are turn signals. This is, you know, tack. This is the hours. And then we got uh, low beam, which also backlights this whole thing. So you can see low beam and then high beam. I need a new bulb, but you get the idea. So um, let's see what else. We got the decompression lever here. That's not wiring. I got to put that back on. Uh, I took the steering wheel off because I had to redo the whole dash. But let's check out the turn signals. So turn left, right here. You can see left turn signal is going good. Right turn signal. You can see that one's working great now. All right, so I replaced all these dash bulbs to LEDs. If y'all want to check out that video, check it out up here. Let's check out the wiring on the back of this thing. Okay, so here's the back of the dash right here. You can see all the wiring right here. And uh, you can see we got the little flasher thing right there, little flasher cylinder. I had to get a new one of those. Um, you can see where all the wires go and they're all color coordinated throughout the whole tractor so they all match. So check them out um, where all the bulbs go. You can see all the sockets. You can see all the different colors. That'll help you get them just set right back from the start so that you don't have to figure it all out like I did. And then you can see right here, we have um, the voltage regulator rectifier and this little electrical box. I'm not exactly sure what it does, but we need it, obviously. And then right here, you can see we got the front wiring of the tractor. Um, this is just how I ran all the wires. Let's check out the rest over near the engine and what all that stuff does. Here's the back of the fuse block wiring right here. Here's a wiring diagram for a Yanmar YM240. It's almost identical. This is the American version, but this should help somebody out. If you guys wanna know how I cleaned all the corrosion out of these connectors, definitely check out the video. I'll post it up here. Um, it's a short video I made on how to clean corrosion out of any kind of connector and it works great. It's not clickbait, guys. Go check out that video. It'll clean all the connectors up on your tractor and get them looking brand new. Let's check out the new battery setup. All right, so here's a new battery I got a while ago. I got it set down in here so we can check it out. Both positives on this side, the negatives on this side, and the negative's just gonna bolt on this bolt right there. And I got a lock nut so it can never come off, and I got the rust all cleaned up. So it's gonna be on there. Um, it's got these nice covers to prevent sparks, you know. And then I got some new lugs in case I need to shorten up some of these wires. But basically, it comes over, over, over. It's gonna bolt up to the starter right here and then it's gonna be all zip tied, nice and pretty. You'll see it on the final rebuild video, but uh, these are number two gauge wires and they should be nice and thick to get this tractor started. Okay guys, here's what I like to do. I like to use this marine heat shrink tubing from Harbor Freight. Um, this stuff works great and you got a bunch of different sizes in here, so you know, check them out. Um, I like to use that and then I got one of these terminal sets. Pretty sure I got this down at Harbor Freight too. But what I like to do is I open them up, um, the connectors, and I take the the things off. I take the plastic off like that, and I just solder them right on the wires because I hate these plastic things. They just look horrible. They don't work well. So I'm going to do one up here for you guys so I can show you real quick. Okay, so what I do is I strip back just like that and I like to leave a little bit. Um, and then I have a different one here because that was one of my good ones. 
But get that off, throw the other piece in the trash, and then you can see it just barely comes up through there, just like that. And then uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna crimp it. So it's got the crimpers on it. Everybody knows about the crimp tools and stuff. Um, I'm almost skipping a step here. We almost forgot our heat shrink. That would have been fun. So I got a piece of heat shrink here. I'll just throw it on there, why not? I'm gonna cut it. So we slide the heat shrink up on here, uh, take the connector, put it on there. I normally get flux and put flux down in here, but you know how it goes when you get the camera out. Crimp it on there, it doesn't have to be that good. And now I'm gonna get my soldering iron and we're gonna solder it. Here's the close up. So I've been doing this on everything. If you have a little spot where a mouse chews through here, all you gotta do is cut the end off, get a piece of heat shrink, put it on there, heat shrink it, that's what I've been doing, heat shrink it like that, and then you know put a new end on it just like this. But this is the marine grade heat shrink. This works great because it has a hot glue in there and it'll melt down. So it'll seal everything from corrosion. Let's get this thing soldered on here. All right, there we go. A little bit of flux did it. Let me heat shrink it. Yeah, baby, melt that thing down. So I've had to do this like 30 times on this tractor, but just on the fly there, you can see that's how I like to solder and crimp and do these connectors. I hate the little plastic pieces on it. Um, here's one I did earlier. You can see it's the same thing. But I just do that, that's a nice permanent connection, and then I get a little bit of dielectric grease and just put it on here so that it can never corrode on me. Um, but yeah, guys, that's how I like to do it. All right, so here's a fuse block right here, and then the clutch safety switch here. I had to re-enable that because somebody disabled the wires, but it only lets you start the tractor when you press down on the clutch. So that's really important because uh, without it, you can run people over. Let's check out the rest of it. Okay, so we're at the front of the tractor now. We got the positive 12 volts to the starter. We got the starter solenoid 12 volts here. We got charging 12 volts here to the battery. Um, we got some voltage regulator rectifier wires here. This is a uh, ground wire, I believe. This is the water temperature sensor wire right here, plugs in on top of the water pump. Then we got the low oil pressure, uh, pressure sending unit right here. If you wanna check that, you can just disable this and the light will shut off. Um, I'll show you how these sensors work here in two seconds. But then we got the wiring harness. Now it goes here, it goes over, it goes to the lights. I call them eyeballs. They look like two big eyeballs. But you can see, it's got the harness here, comes down. Now this one is the one I disabled. So if y'all wanna disable it, if you have this old style, the light will be on. So I got a new one, doesn't have this whole contraption here, it's just a bottle. What you do is cut that wire, don't splice them together, just leave them cut and insulate them and the light will go out. There's another wire in here for that float level, for the float level, battery float water acid float level gauge thing on the dash. What you do is cut that wire, splice them together, solder them, insulate it, that light will go out. So that's basically the rundown on that. Uh, this thing's super simple. It all just works on you know resistances and stuff. Like I'm gonna ground this out to the chassis and I'll show you what it does about the dash. All right, so watch the temp gauge and the fuel gauge. I'm gonna ground them out and you're gonna see how this thing works. Now watch the fuel gauge. Now watch the oil pressure gauge. Here's the tank with the fuel sending unit on it. It just plugs up right here. You got a ground and a positive. 
and then it goes to this connector right here. And then up under the dash, you know, this is gonna plug in like that. It's gonna plug right into the top of the fuel tank sending unit right there so we can get a good uh, measurement of how much fuel we have in there. We don't have to just look in the tank. This thing still works unbelievably after all these years. Here's the turn signal wires. They start right here and they run down there. Then they run down the frame right here and split loom, go here. Got them running all the way back. Let's go back there. So I got them coming out of the split loom here. You can see one wire goes left, one wire goes right. And then they come, the white goes here like that, goes up into the fender. This side goes up into the fender right there. And then it goes into the light right there on this side. Then I have my starter and my alternator over here painted up, ready to go. That's pretty much it for the wiring, guys. All right, y'all, so that's it for the video. This is gonna help a bunch of people out, I'm sure, to rewire their mice nests all up under there. And, uh, you know, just check everything and go through everything. Don't leave any wires untouched. Clean all the corrosion and everything because you in there, I see you, I see you watching. You're not going to do it. Yeah, you. You're not going to do it. And then it's going to burn up your tractor. So check everything. Check y'all out on the next one. Engine rebuild's almost done. Don't forget to drop me a huge thumbs up down below. Subscribe. All that fun stuff. Comment. Peace.